no evidence that it's happened. And um, some people have said there's 0% chance that it will happen. I know Dr. Sanders takes issue with that, so saying it's not 0%. It's slightly higher than 0%, but you know, I think we're dabbling around the edges here quite a bit. I mean, look, HIV is an example of a virus that was transmitted through bodily fluids for decades, and you know, millions of people have been infected, so plenty of chances for mutation, and it has mutated. It mutated, so it became less uh, susceptible to some of the medications out there, things like that, but never changed its mode of transmission. And if I can just say, Dr. Sanders, you say that there is evidence of viruses that cause human disease changing their mode of transmission as a result of mutations. What, what viruses are you talking about? I'm talking about influenza A. Influenza A, in its natural host, the aquatic birds, <laughs> is a gastrointestinal virus. And when it hops over to mammals, very few mu mutations necessary for the adaptation, it is now a respiratory virus. So it, it changes. Within, within humans, though, right now in a situation like this where it's already transmitting via bodily fluids in humans and then mutating to go airborne, has there been a case like that where it's within humans, within a particular species already? Um, within a particular species, yes, there are changes within particular species, not for humans. But the example of HIV is really not a very fair one. We know where the receptors are for HIV. They are only present on cells of the immune system. There are no receptors in the lung. There is zero possibility for HIV to go into the lung. We even know if we introduce HIV artificially into the lung, it doesn't even go out into the airway. It goes towards the bloodstream as it should because that's where its targets are. So HIV is not a good comparison. Its receptors are not there. We know that Ebola's receptors are on the airway tissue and therefore that's one of the requirements necessary for Ebola to be transmitted by a respiratory route. There are other requirements. And so those other requirements may have to do with how well it survives desiccation. Can it be transmitted on particles of a certain size? Yeah. Um, so, but we know that those things can be affected by mutation as well. I don't know how many mutations. I don't know how likely it is. And I'm not, tr I'm not, I'm not trying to scare anybody. And I certainly am insisting we have no evidence for its transmission that way. But as the number of cases accumulate, a small probability becomes a larger probability. Mm -hmm. See, my, 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 my problem with this a little bit is, I, okay, everything you said is, is likely true, but, but the idea that it has happened before within humans already and mode of transmission has changed as a result of mutations, I, again, I'm not sure that that's true, and I, think, I feel like we're dabbling around the edges here. You say you don't want to scare anybody. That's exactly what it does, is scare people. I mean, is it, it, the chance of this happening is so remote. We could bring up millions of things that have a very, very remote chance of happening. I'm just not sure of the value of that other than to create fear. Okay, guys, hang, hang, hang on, I, because I want Dr. Devi. So. Dr. Devi is sitting in the middle and being very patient. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Devi. <laughs> Well, I think one thing we should also look at is Nina Pham's dog. I mean, there's some evidence that uh, dogs can actually carry the Ebola virus. I mean, there's no evidence that it spreads to humans or that it infects dogs. But, you know, if we're looking at ways to actually fight the virus, I mean, one thing to consider is how is the dog actually able to carry Ebola virus and not get infected? You know, that might be an area for research to really look at how it's able to do that and whether there's something about a dog's immune system that would protect it. I mean, dogs are man's best friend, so let's see if they can help us here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Sanjay, did you say everything you wanted, and David Sanders as well? You guys get it all in. Again, we don't want to scare people. I just want to make it's, sure that we... It, the point We're is, both it, Big it, Ten guys. He's a Purdue guy. I'm okay. a Michigan guy. All right, so just, just quickly, quickly I'm up against then. the break. Sorry about that. I mean, the important thing is, what if it does go airborne, and everybody's been told there's no possibility of that for the wrong reasons, right? Yeah. If, if we are insisting on reasons that are, in fact, incorrect, uh, that would be a disaster. Okay. So the other thing is, if we, we might have to actually be prepared All right, for that possibility. Thank you, David Sanders. And as Dr. Gupta said, the chances of that are very, very remote here. And we'll keep digging We've got other, other bigger problems we should be focusing our attention on right now, thank, I think. Thank you, David. Thank you, Dr. Debbie. Thank you, um, Sanjay.